The words, Know Thyself, Gnothi Seauton, were inscribed in stone above the ancient Greek temple of Apollo at Delphi. Socrates took this injunction very seriously and spent his life trying to do just that, know himself. According to Plato, the conclusion he reached was that he knew nothing about anything. His wisdom lay in understanding the limits of his knowledge. Other philosophers, such as Thomas Hobbes, have been more optimistic about self-knowledge and its uses. He thought that one of the best ways to understand other people was to introspect. If you want to appreciate what motivates others, study yourself closely. If you observe your own thoughts, desires and feelings, you'll recognize that what it's like to be you is a good indicator of what it's like to be someone else. It was in the late 19th century, though, that philosophers, psychologists and novelists began to recognize the power of unconscious forces in our lives. Sigmund Freud's claims about the ways in which repressed desires surface in disguised form, in our dreams, our slips of the tongue and in neurotic symptoms, led many to question whether each of us ever fully understands the motivation of our behavior. Since then, some experimental psychologists, such as Bruce Hood, have even suggested, based on brain research, that the self is an illusion. If they're right, no one can truly know their own self, because there is no self to know.